How are we doing, guys? Yeah. Start by talking about the five players you had who made the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I think a well-deserved honor for, for each of them. Uh, obviously, when you talk about Tyron and Zach and, and Zeke on the offensive side of the ball, certainly regarded as among the best players of their position in the league, and they have been for a number of years. And uh, Demarcus Lawrence has, has just been a, really a dominant, impactful player for us all year long and, and, and over the last couple of years. And you know Byron Jones, it's great to see him get that recognition as well. He's played awfully well. Uh, at the cornerback position for us, guards guys week in and week out, just at a very high level. So uh, great honors for those guys, well deserved. A lot of times for corners, it's interceptions are the big stat that guys look at, but Byron doesn't have any. Does that say that people recognize how he actually played as opposed to just looking at stats? Yeah, uh, I know there's a lot of different things that go into uh, selecting the guys for the Pro Bowl, but hopefully guys are able to watch the games and watch the film and, and they'll see the kind of impact that he's made all year long. He's out there by himself a lot, and he's just simply guards guys week in and week out. You talked about this before, but again, he's spending so much of his time here at safety, and you use him at both positions. But you playing so long at safety, and then playing at the level he has, going to corner for his first full season, how, how difficult or impressive is that? Yeah, really impressive. Uh, he's just a good football player, and, and, and we've talked about this a lot uh, through the years, and we drafted him. He was a two-year starter at corner and two-year starter at safety in college. So it wasn't like you're projecting him to one or the other position. You saw it on tape. You saw him play at a high level. Uh, you know what kind of guy he is. He's, he's an off-the-charts uh, person. Uh, he works as hard as they, as they come. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, his athleticism, all of that allows him to do so many different things. And, you know, he's been really selfless in a lot of ways, playing the different spots we've needed him to play. Uh, throughout his career with us, but uh, certainly settled in a corner and playing at a very, very high level. What was Chris Richard's role in eventually moving him out to the outside this year? Uh, Chris, obviously, co coaching the DB, certainly had a, a, a big voice in that. Uh, collectively, we just thought that was the best move with the guys we had at corner and also with the guys we had at safety. And it uh, just made sense to all of us. And again, it wasn't like it was a projection. We've seen him do it. He's capable of doing it, and it's worked out really well. In your judgment of Jalen Smith, how close is he to being deserving of Pro Bowl level attention? Uh, again, I don't really get into the Pro Bowl part of it. Uh, I guess if you're asking me, is he playing well? He's certainly playing very well and played very well all year long, certainly among the leaders of our defense and impactful week in and week out. Uh, just watch the tape. He shows up, uh, makes a number of plays on the ball. Uh, you know, as a run defender, and not only does he make the plays, but you know he makes them in a way that, that that sends a message, which is a really positive thing for our defense. He's a very physical player, very active, and getting better and better by the week. Have you seen the inside of the defensive line of all through this year in the league and Antoine come into their own as the defensive tackle? Yeah, I think each of those guys have done an excellent job. You know, Malik was dealing with some injuries early on, so it was great to get him back, and he's been a consistent performer, performer for us week in and week out. You know, we know Antoine's route, you know, uh, fourth on the depth chart, then third, and just kept showing up, and, and really a great thing for him and a great thing for our team that just really based on the merits, a guy like that can emerge. He's done an outstanding job, you know, week in and week out and continues to get better. You know, and the backup guys, you know, uh, Karan Reed and, 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 and Ross have both done a good job in the work that they've gotten as well. So at different times, we've been banged up. Each of those guys has shown their versatility to go in there and be effective. And uh, I think for the most part, done a really good job for us. When you have a game like last week and you have your meeting yesterday, do you spend much time on the Colts game or do you just kind of flush that one aside and Talk Tampa. Yeah, we'll go through the process uh, regardless of what the results are uh, each week. And uh, you try to identify what was good in the game and certainly clean up what wasn't good and, and, and try to rectify it going forward. So we went through that process yesterday. And then once we come out of those meetings, we put it to bed and we get on to the next challenge. Was there a message in that meeting to them as they look ahead to this game and the significance of both this game and the second game to try to get that NFC title? Yeah, the message is, is simply uh, stay focused on what we need to do each day to go play our best football and, and learn the lessons from last week, just like you try to learn the lessons from every week and move forward and get ready for this next challenge. you expect Zach to do anything today? Uh, he'll work on the side today. Does it seem like he's improved the, the week off to help him at all? Just yeah, no question. You know, that, that time away certainly helps those guys. and. He's as tough as they come, so he's going to give himself every chance as we go. But today he'll just be working on the side. So, Fulo, can you do anything today? Uh, he was involved in the walkthrough. Don't anticipate him practicing very much. I 
better? The fact that it's improving, it? yes. This offense face standout linebacker Darius Leonard last week. Do you feel going against the player like Leonard will help this offense in preparation for Levante David this week, who leads the Buccaneers in tackles and has that similar ability off the line of scrimmage to get to ball carriers? Yeah, you know, uh, each of those guys can challenge you. You know, we talked about the, the production. Uh, of Leonard last week and how active he's been. And certainly, Levante Davis has been that guy for Tampa for a number of years now. And he's a great football player. He's absolutely one of those guys who leaps off the tape at you with his speed and his playmaking ability. So, uh, you know, you, you, hopefully, you get better from every experience that you have. And there's no question it'll be a big challenge for us this week against these guys. How do you feel your team has responded during the course of the season when it's been good, when it's been bad? Just moving on to the next. Yeah, I think for the most part, we've done a good job of that. Uh, that's always something we can improve upon. Our game challenges you in so many different ways. Uh, it's as simple as play by play, series by series, quarter by quarter, half by half, game by game, day by day, week by week, all of that stuff. You're, you're always trying to emphasize the importance of you know, taking each new opportunity uh, as, a, as a single entity and letting the last one go. Uh, whether it was good or bad. And uh, the best teams, the best players are able to do that, and that's certainly something we're striving for. Tavon Austin working more this week, or will it be basically the same? Similar season? to last week. When, when you get to this point in the season, how difficult, and, and guys are banged up, and whether they're on the injury report or not, how do you have to uh, detail your practices? Are they shorter? Do you... Take things out. How, how do you work all that one? Yeah, for the most part, we have a plan over the course of the season uh, where uh, as the season goes on, you tighten the practice down, whether it's taking practice reps out, uh, getting those reps more in walkthrough settings, uh, tightening individual periods down. Uh, all those things are things we, we do kind of systematically uh, over the course of the year. But then uh, you have to look at where you are as a team. If you're a little bit more banged up, maybe you have to do something more on this practice or this week. Uh, to make sure you guys are, are ready to go and prepare the right way to, to be fresh and play our best football on Sunday. So uh, it's systematic, but it's also a little bit of a feel thing as well. With your situation a little bit in flux at guard right now, will you move Connor Williams back to left guard? Will he work it right where he did the last game? You'll just go with right minute left, or how does that kind of play out? Yeah, I haven't made any final determinations on any of that stuff. And you know, all those guys are, are striving to be up and available for us. So uh, we'll work our way through practice today with a lot of different combinations and just see where those guys are and how we progress over the week. Did some good things in the game. Uh, yeah, he was impressive, really the first time he's had some extended action uh, at guard and uh, you know he had played a little bit earlier on in the year, but I uh, thought for the most part handled the work fairly well. I, going back to Byron, I, I get it's not a projection. You've seen him play cornerback plenty, but was there a moment at all OTA's training camp where it just you felt confidence that he was going to be able to do this job as well as he has? Uh, again, we've had a lot of confidence in him right from the start, and, and I think just how we've used him demonstrates that. You know, Throughout his career, we've said, okay, play some corner, play some safety. Hey, go play the dime guy, guard that tight end, all of that. So... Really, right from the start, we, we put him in a lot of different spots, and and really, I think that demonstrates the confidence we've had in him. And uh, you know, what we've tried to do is get him to a point where we could play him in the position we think he could he, he could help us the most, and then be good enough at the other areas. And we felt good about where we were at safety with Heath and with Xavier to give those guys a shot there, and leave Byron over there and keep him there, and not be uh, not be tempted to move him back if we didn't feel good about this or somebody got hurt. So we wanted to shore up the rest of the secondary and kind of leave him there. And he's responded really well to it. You view him as a corner now? <laughs> yeah, I'd say he's a corner. And Chris has done a great job with him. Uh, he really has, you know, from a technical standpoint, an emotional standpoint, how to play that spot. I think he's really grown under Chris's tutelage. So it's worked out well for everybody. Stephen Jones was on the radio recently and said he hasn't really been able to wrap his hands around why this team has been having some red zone woes. And in particular, the last three games, it's the numbers are not exactly great. Have you been able to wrap your hands around it and come up with a singular reason or a few reasons as to why you guys have been struggling down there? Yeah, I think it's always most instructive just to look at what happened, uh, just individually, series by series, what happened on this particular series. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk about the last three games, I think, you know, some, some of it has been we've had some minus plays right from the start that got us into some bad down and distance situations that weren't unfavorable for us. You're on the nine yard line, first and goal, and you have a four yard loss. Now it's second and goal at the 13. That becomes a challenging situation. How do you overcome that? 
Uh, and then I think other parts have been we've had some we've had some other negative plays or penalties <laughs> that put you behind the chains and get you out of rhythm. Uh, you want to be advancing the ball towards the goal line. You want to keep putting pressure on those guys by your ability to run it and throw it. And, and I think another part of it has been the execution part. I thought in the game the other day there were some plays that we could have simply made. And, and I think the players would tell you that, the coaches would tell you that, that, that would, we would have cashed in on drives and we didn't make them. So we always look at ourselves first as coaches to make sure we're putting our players in the best position and then it's the execution part. So you evaluate it series by series, play by play, and try to make the corrections as you go forward. Does there get to a point where you say, it's happened so many times. We don't just want to evaluate it one by one. It needs to be more of a general situation. Yeah, I, I think when you're evaluating it one by one, you, you, you eventually are pulling back and saying, what is the trend here? You know, and I, and I don't think there has been one singular trend. I think it's been each of those things I just described, you know, whether it's minus plays or lack of this or lack of that. And, uh, and so we just have to keep, we have to keep bearing down. It's a, certainly an important area. I think we've driven the ball well for the most part this year. We drove the ball well in the game the other day, long sustained drives. But ultimately, you got to cash in. You got to score touchdowns, and we're working hard on doing that better. Thank you. All right, good to see you guys. Yeah.